Well, hey there. Thanks for joining me again in the Curl Up Candle Kitchen. Today I'm going to talk just a little bit about the different waxes that are on the market that you can use to make contained candles. Now, my wax of choice is the soy wax. It's a commercially farmed, soft, oily wax that comes in a flake-like form like this. Okay, one of the beauties of soy wax is that it has a lower melt point. What I mean by that is that you can take a burning candle, like I've got one here, you can pop your finger right in here and it's lukewarm. It will not burn you, so it's really quite a safe wax to have around the household. And also, it's a really lovely texture. You can rub this straight onto your wrist and it just soaks in like a beautiful scent of oil. Okay, so that's one of the lovely things about soy and a reason that I use this a lot. Frosting is a natural characteristic of soy. And it's long been said that because it doesn't have the perfect smooth white finish that we're accustomed to seeing with many of our retailed candles, um, people think that it's a bit of a flaw, but it's not. Let me tell you that if it's not 100% soy, it won't frost. So it's a classic telltale sign to know if you're dealing with the genuine product. If you're not getting any frosting, odds are you're dealing with a soy that's a percentage blend of soy mixed with paraffin palm or both. Now, palm wax is another really popular wax to make container and pillar candles. The difference between palm wax to soy wax is that palm wax is, is steam distilled to extract the palm oil. This is then hardened. So it's a, it's a really lovely natural process to extract the oil. And a, a, I think a cornerstone difference, you could say, between the palm and the soy is that palm oil is a harder, drier, smoother wax. Therefore, it's often known as being more durable in the warmer climates against warping. So if you're making pillar candles, you'll often see people utilising palm wax over the soy wax. And I guess the beauty of palm wax is that it blends beautifully back into soy or paraffin, and you'll often see soy candles that do have a component of um, palm wax in there as well, just to help put a bit of durability into the soy. The soy is so um, beautiful and soft. Soy candle and palm, uh, soy wax and palm wax can both cope with a relatively high fragrance load, anywhere from 9 through 12%. Um, I would say that a safe bet for anybody that is wanting a good cold and a good hot, a hot scent throw, that 10% is perfectly adequate. Now moving on to what they, uh, what they call one of maybe the least natural waxes on the market is the paraffin. Paraffin is a petrochemical derivative, so it's not a natural wax. But let me tell you, it's been one of the most trusted waxes on the market for generations. It's non-toxic from ingested uh, by, by humans, and it has been utilised in food and cosmetics and medical applications for centuries. Some of the brilliant characteristics of paraffin is that it is known for its superior scent throw. It has an amazing hot scent throw. That means when it's lit. Okay, another characteristic of paraffin is that it's got brilliant um, container adhesion and a beautiful flawless surface. Often when you see retail candles that just look like a super smooth baby's bottom on top, you can guarantee that there is an element of paraffin in there. Uh, you can get single pour paraffins that are pure paraffin or quite commonly nowadays you will see a soy and paraffin mix. But I strongly recommend playing with the soy and the paraffin. I'm not against any of the waxes on the market I might add. But this definitely has some advantages against the over and above the natural waxes. A wax that I don't use much but is freely available, and a lot of nature lovers out there will agree with me that beeswax is a beautiful 100% natural wax. If you're using beeswax, be mindful that the wick system that you use will end up having to be two to three times larger than the wick size you would use across a paraffin soy or palm uh, wax based candle. Also with, with uh, beeswax is that beeswax has a natural strong scent of its own. So if you're wanting to create scented candles with the natural smell of the beeswax, you're going to find that any fragrance you add to that is going to compete with the beeswax. So I'm probably going to suggest that if you're interested in the beautiful natural beeswax, leave the beauty of the beeswax in its own fragrance all to itself and just make candles um, that are, are purely natural and don't add any fragrance to those. That's about it covering off on the waxes. 
In our next segment, we're going to utilise different wick systems with the different waxes. Um, a notable difference with a paraffin wax is because it has a higher burn temperature. In other words, you would go putting your finger in that because it will be hot. Um, you can often use a wick size smaller. So we'll cover that off in the wick series where we go into depth about choosing the right wick to get the even burn pull in the different sized glassware. We'll cover off all of the beautiful properties of the new American hard wood wicks that are now available. And um, hey, all I can say is that a great candle is both an art and a science. A great candle is a culmination of the perfect wick with a natural wax, with the right amount of scent, the right amount of colour, and then a perfectly round glassware with a nice wide mouth where you can get the accurate amount of ventilation and circulation around that wick. You need to bring all of those things together to create the perfect candle. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time.